Hi, I'm Megan Bushhausen, and you're watching Notes from the Dev Video Edition. Hi, welcome to today's episode of Notes from the Dev. I'm Megan, and with me today is Niven Ranchad from Mayoris. And he has coded up this really cool little segment in Outlook, not really a segment, like this piece of content in Outlook um, that has some overlapping content and makes really good use of VML. Um, so if you've played with overlapping content before, uh, this is like a next step further and it's super awesome. And I am so happy that Niven is here to show us. Hey, Niven. Hey. How's it going? Not too bad. Just excited to share this technique. Nice. Why don't you um, share your screen and we can take a look at what you've done. Cool. Today, I want to talk about faux absolute positioning, uh, my use of it, and my slight adaptation to that um, for use uh, horizontally. Um, so if you're not aware of the faux absolute positioning technique, uh, Stephen Sayo and Mark Robbins released this amazing technique to essentially overlap items and kind of do away with background images as much as possible, um, which is amazing for the, for the community. And so a little background on faux absolute positioning, how it works. Uh, essentially, we're trying to trick the rendering engine. Um, so we have our content blocks, and I've got a perfect example down here. Um, we've got a content block, so we've got text and a CTA, we've got a profile image, and then we've got a colored background with rounded uh, edges on it, which is we want it to work in Outlook as well as everywhere else. Um, and essentially what we want to do is build our sections and our blocks as we intend them to look. Uh, and then with the faux absolute technique, you essentially wrap each of those blocks in say a div, in my case I used a div, um, and then you just want to essentially set a max height on that. That'll trick the rendering engine and say, oh, there's no height for this element. Pull the next element back up to fill that void. Um, and then that's how you get your content. It's still going to sit and render as expected and is now going to be sitting on top of the element below. Um, so that's essentially how it works. Um, and we'll go through in detail um, how the code works and everything. Um, I guess in terms of a use case for this, so specifically for how we used it, um, we have a client at Mayoris who uh, quite heavily uses uh, Salesforce Marketing Cloud. And they have they are an umbrella company and they have brands underneath that they have different uh, themes and, and brand guidelines and things for. Um, and they wanted, they were going through a brand alignment project and they wanted one base template that they could use um, and be able to switch out the themes between them. So font colors, um, CTA background colors and things like that. Um, and so, one challenge that we received uh, from our internal designer, in-house designer, was this little NFT component, as we call them, at Mayoris. Um, so there's a little bit going on here. Uh, we've got a text and CTA column, profile image column, and a background tab lock thing. Um, so as you can see, there's rounded edges on the background. There's rounded edges on the button. Um, so and then there's like this overlapping here, there's intersection between these two columns. It's quite complicated. Uh, in the past, we probably would have just gone with uh, a background image. Um, it would have been easy, or even a background image, including the profile image and the background tab. And then the text could be live text for accessibility concerns. Um, and that's great too, um, but you would have to use multiple media queries to adapt this text down as the screen got smaller. Um, and that can be an issue that's quite code heavy. Um, and with the client needing everything to be managed by themselves once we delivered the project, um, we wanted to make sure that one dark mode could be taken care of with the background color on that tab. So whatever color that ends up being for whichever brand they're using the template for, that font color is going to adapt as best as possible depending on the rendering engine and the email client um, to, to suit that background color. Um, and the contrast will work, hopefully, fingers crossed. We can't always work um, definitively and make everything work as we need it to. Um, so yeah, so, we're, so this is kind of a breakdown of how the design is going to work. Uh, we've got our column, we've got our background in red, and then you can see the intersection and the overlapping uh, areas. Um, it's quite complicated 
from the looks of that, but we'll get through that and we'll see how this works. Okay, so let's jump down to the first step. So as I showed before, we've got our intended content blocks um, as, as they should look, as they should feel, as they should work with each other. And then we've got our background tab underneath. Um, so if we jump into the code, I'll use the inspect element and jump us down. Okay, so we've got the background block there, which is in a separate div um, and basically out of the flow of the content block. Um, we've got some VML there to take care of the div and, and things like that. Um, and if we go back to the top here, so this is what I was talking about before. So we've got the basic structure of the table, which is taking care of um, the text column and the profile image. We've got the separate um, uh, table cells as well, or the table columns to split up the text and CTA from the profile image. Uh, and then one thing you may have noticed as we we're scrolling through that code is I've got multiple V rect elements in the VML. So I've got one here and that encases, so if I turn the focus mode on, you can see how that's being wrapped. So that's just for the text and CTA column. If we scroll down, um, you can see that closes here and then I open another one and that is specifically just for the profile image. Now, the reason for this is, and we don't typically see this, is we can't nest VML for Outlook, which is crazy, but that's the world we live in. Um, where I found that we can actually layer vrect elements or, or vml elements in, in general um, and so I'll, we'll get into that further down but that's essentially how it's structured so i've got two vrect elements for outlook and then two basically table cells for each of the content blocks in the larger content block so let's go into uh, implementing the faux absolute position first right so let's jump in here so the first step as i mentioned is we're going to give this the wrapping div of my content block, um, a max height of zero. So we're tricking the rendering engine and you'll see it jump in a second. There we go. So that's now zeroed out the height of the div, which is this here. And it's even highlighting it in parcel in the preview. And then the table here is full height as you would expect it to be. Um, and so we're tricking the rendering engine and saying that height is zero and that block. So this div down the bottom here is now sliding up to fill that void and that's the faux absolute in action right there, you can see it. Um, now the next step is we obviously need to code this for Outlook and, and implement the same thing into VML. So part of the faux absolute technique is to use position absolute. It absolutely works in Outlook when you use it in VML uh, from memory. I think that's the only way it'll work. Um, so uh, obviously you won't see that in the preview because this is Outlook only and the preview is just an HTML preview, but that is essentially all I've done. Position absolute, top zero. Uh, and we need to do the same for the second vrect around the, uh, around the profile image. Position absolute and top zero. Cool, that is done. You do not need to touch the background block at all. The technique means you don't have to do anything to pull that up or whatever. Cool, so the next step. Now we want to try and pull the profile image up to match the design, which we can see here. So let's go to step three. Okay, so the overlap. Um, now this is really simple. All I'm doing is uh, um, kind of further tricking the, the rendering engine or just, just adding to it to the initial trick, which is just simply just to pull that up 20 pixels. That's I calculated or tested out, found that it only needed to go up 20 pixels. All I do is add 20 pixels to that max height. That's it. Uh, remove that too, and you'll see him jump up. Oops, sorry, there we go. Um, and that it's as simple as that. Uh, obviously we need to do VML again. And so in this case, we're just going to amend the top value to minus 16 for the text column. I'll explain why the values are different in a second. Um, and then we'll go down and the same thing for the profile image column. Cool, sorry, the preview is jumping around a little bit, but there we go, step three. And now, so, like there is a difference between this top value, the text column top value and the max height I added. Now Outlook is going to uh, kind of render pixel sizes and things like that differently to everything else, to every other email client. That's just how it works. Um, so why it's 16 is when I put it at 20, 
uh, it actually, there was actually a visible gap underneath the profile image. So it was literally just trial and error until I got that value correct. So it just happened to be 16 pixels, so it's slightly different to the 20. Uh, no big deal. You'll work that out if you, if you encounter the same issue. Um, and then the text column is 13 because that, that just worked to match the design. So there's, again, it's just an arbitrary figure, really, um, just to make it match the design. OK, so we're at a good point now. Um, we've got everything, everything flowing. We've got the uh, profile image overlapping. Now we need to work on the intersection. And that will fix kind of the positioning uh, issues we've got here. The button is quite close to the bottom of the block. Um, yeah, it just it doesn't look as nice as the design. So step four is the intersection. Now this is really simple again. This is where I kind of adapted on the original faux absolute position technique. Um, so initially we've we've basically only seen it work vertically um, in, in Stephen and Mark's respective write-ups on, on the technique. Um, so what I found was I can actually adapt this to work for widths as well. Um, so if we go to the text column, I am going to go to the actual divs, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, well, the table cell and the div that I'm using to wrap the, the, the um, text column. So all I do is, again, I'm going to set a max width of what I intend the, um, that width to, to be, to kind of be tricked to look like it should be. So here we go. So this is now 225, this column here. And as you can see, the, the profile image also jumped over to the left, which is exactly what we need. There should be a visible gap here between the edge of the block and the profile image. So if we go back to the design, there you can see. So there's nice padding around um, each side. They should sit flush with the bottom of the block. Um, it's only the top that overlaps. So um, it is as simple as adding that max width and then the inner content width or the inner div width in my case is simply adding a larger width and all that's going to do is going to push that content out to sit in or as it looks like it's inside of the profile image column um, we can just to prove the point we can actually just set this to let's say 600 pixels oh not 6000 600 and you'll see that blow out completely. So that's all it's doing is it's tricking the rendering engine to say, this is how big I'm supposed to be, supposed to be 225 uh, pixels wide. Um, and then inside, I'm actually 600 pixels wide, but I'm not going to tell the rendering engine that. Um, and that's all we're doing. Um, so we'll put that back to 310, because that was the value that worked for me. And then VML, of course. Uh, so now we can simply on the image column, just change the left value to negative 15. And so obviously, again, we won't see this in the preview, but that's all I needed to do. And again, that could be whatever value you need it to be. It may not match any other values you've got. Just do it till you get it right, until it looks good, perfect in Outlook. Um, and that is essentially it. So this is the result. Um, you do, we don't have a side by side with the design, but as you can see, this is the Outlook rendering as well. And it looks almost identical. I mean, you've got the rounded edges um, for everywhere else uh, apart from Outlook because you've already got a V-Rect wrapping the button here. So you can't then use another a round rect for the button. Um, I am working on a slight alternative method to this, which is to take the CTA outside of the V-Rect wrapping the text content. Um, but it's getting a bit tricky because you're positioning, you're adding a position absolute to this V-Rect here. And that is telling the rendering engine that it's got zero height. That's what position absolute will do because it'll allow that block to go anywhere you need it to. Um, and so the button then renders all the way up here at the top of the block. Um, I'm still working on it. I could add a definitive height um, a hard coded height on this V rect that then doesn't, that makes it less dynamic for the client. So they can't use as much or as little text as they would like. Um, but that's where we're at. It still works. Um, there's one button that isn't rounded. Um, there was one small issue in outlook 120 DPI where 
uh, as usual, widths were blown out. It wasn't really rendering correctly. Nothing was positioned correctly. I spent a long time trying to fix it and it ended up, it turned out that the fix was to convert all of my pixel width values in the VML to points. I've never needed to do that before. Um, I just tried it for this because that is one of the recommendations and it worked, that fixed it. Um, so that's just a hint in case you try this and it doesn't work, try points. Um, there is a really great tool that will convert your pixels to points because I do not know how to do that off the top of my head. Um, but there will be a detailed blog post that should be out um, right now that goes through all of the stuff in detail, everything we've covered, uh, as well as the, the issues and the fixes that we put in place. Um, so that's it. That is multi-axis for absolute positioning in action in all email clients. Our testing came out really well. I love it. <laughs> this is really cool. Yeah, I wouldn't personally waste time on getting rounded <laughs> buttons in Outlook because nah. I'm very anti. I am personally very anti VML when it's not absolutely needed and rounded mm -hmm. corners are to me a progressive enhancement. So sorry, yes. Outlook users, yeah. you don't get rounded corners from me. Um, sure. But yeah, it, it feels like if you try to go for rounded corners on those buttons that you would just end up with just like so much more code. For oh, yes. Buttons. Yeah. I mean, and you just... could do it like a typical trick, which is just to have mm -hmm. images in the corners or, yeah. or something, do something silly like that and blow up your code. And it, it's just silly. It's over the top. And as you say, like rounded corners are an enhancement, if anything. Yeah. So we shouldn't really go that far unless someone's going to pay you a lot more money to, to, <laughs> to be that detailed, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This real. I, I love this. Uh, I feel like people ask all the time about like how to deal with overlapping content. You know, designers love overlapping content. Mm -hmm. I've done it as a designer. I've seen other designers do it. And to have that code solution on getting it done is really amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope more people start experimenting with that and trying it out. Um, I've done a little bit of the vertical stuff, um, overlapping stuff before. I haven't mm -hmm. tried going horizontal. I actually recently <laughs> tried going horizontal, but then I, I'm still working on it. So mm -hmm. I'll probably reference this when I go back to working on that. Oh, please um, do. Yeah. <laughs> probably need it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm working on a little thing um, uh, that hopefully should be done soon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at least by the time this video comes out, it should be, yeah. I hope. Um, but anyways, thank you so much for showing us that. It's really valuable. I hope people watching also find it really valuable. Try it out. Let us know how it goes. Um, again, Niven, thank you. Where can thank we you find for you me. online? Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, uh, where can we yeah. find you? Uh, so on Twitter is literally just Niven Ranchard. Um, you'll find me tweeting to the email geeks hashtag all the time, uh, or I'm in the Slack channel, uh, Slack group. Um, and then I should be releasing a portfolio. I've got a portfolio up at the moment. If you find me on Twitter, you'll see the link there, but I'm coming up with a new site soon to help with tutorials and things. So hopefully that'll be, that'll be out by the time this video comes out. Um, but yeah, that, those are the main places. Awesome. Well, again, I know I've said this probably like two other times already. Thank you for coming on and watchers. Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you, you know, like subscribe, follow us, share everywhere. Um, and we will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>